Greetings, salutations, it's me, James, your BA Sensei, back with another Power Query tutorial. The first one for 2024, the year of the dragon. And today's video, I'm going to show you two things. I'm going to show you how to use the table split add function, and I'm going to show you a nice use case for nested let functions. All right, so the data set we're going to be looking at is this pivoted stock portfolio over here. You can see we basically have the stock portfolio as a 2022 pivoted in a pivoted format. And then we add the same stock portfolio at 2023. So we want to use the split add function to split this one data set into two and then basically unpivoted and then pivoted back. So we have dynamic column titles for each quarter over here. Okay, so enough speaking. Let me show you how to do it. All right, all right. Let's get the data into Power Query. So go to data, get data from file, Excel workbook. Select the file. You can see this data all comes in one sheet. And there you can see it's actually two data sets rolled into one. I say transform data. Now Power Query opens. I don't like this change data type thing here because it hard codes the, the titles. I say no. I don't want to promote the headers. I delete that. Navigation is cool. We leave it at that. So this is our data set. Let's rename this to split demo. Yes. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add an index column starting at one. All right, the second thing I want to do is because I'm using the split add function, one of the parameters of the split add function is where do you want to split the table? And I obviously want to split it where this value is null. But I don't want to hard code it at line 26 because it might be different for if I use it. So I want to dynamically determine what position this number 26 is at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a new step. Let's call this step split location. Yes. And what we do in there is. We simply go table, select rows, because we want to find the row in the add index table, which is this table. And I want to say each, and I want to find where column one, which is that first column, is equal to, no. That should give me that. As you can see, it's row 26. I don't want that as an answer. So what I want is I want to say, give me the index column. Cool, it gives me that, but that's not good enough. I just want a single value. So I'm just gonna say curly bracket zero, and that's gonna give me a number 26. And you can see that actually means at row 26, that's where we wanna split it. So split location is that place where we wanna dynamically split. All right, so let's add a new step. I'm gonna refer back to added index before that step. Now I'm gonna use the split add function. So I'm gonna say, Table split at, yes. It takes two parameters. Take the table and where we want to split it. Luckily, we say the table is the added index table. And we know where we split it. Uh, we, we know where we should split it. That's at row 26. And we created that variable called split location. And we say close the bracket. Whoa. And now we have the first table. You can see table one. Yes. And table two split exactly from that null. So that's a dynamic splitter, which is so excellent. All right, so note one thing, this table split at basically created a list with a table, two tables inside of it. All right, so it's actually a list we're gonna work with. Let's quickly rename this custom to splat. All right, so we're gonna say, add a new step. I'm gonna click on table there. List transform. And we're gonna give it the custom one list, which is the previous, if you can see this, the list of the tables. Give it as an input. And now we want to apply our clustered let. So I'm going to say each. I'm going to press shift and enter. First thing I want to do is I want to remove this index column. I really don't need that. So I'm going to say table, remove columns. And I want to tell this table is the underscore that refers to the table within each list. And I want to remove the index column. But before we do that, let's say do the clustered let, let. Give this thing a name. Let's call this an A. And we say in A. This is the syntax for a clustered let. And I say, okay. So what I did now is it went into each of these tables in this list and it removed the index column. Pretty neat, pretty neat. Next thing I want to do is I want to promote the headers. So I'm just going to add a step to this clustered let, comma after the A. I'm going to say B. We say table promote headers and the input to that, the table would be a, which is the previous variable in the let statement, a, 
and that's it I want to promote that and you just need to remember the n needs to now refer to the latest variable which is b and I say okay look at the table now the headers have been promoted isn't that excellent okay so the next thing I want to do is I want to unpivot these data sets I want to have the stock code as the rows and I want to unpivot these all right so what we do is we're going to add another step in there we're going to say c inside our clustered let we're going to say table unpivot other columns and the table we're going to give it is table b which is the previous variable and I'm going to tell it, I want to pivot it, the rows. I want to keep it at stock, which is that first column over there. That's the one row I want to keep in my pivot. I want to create a new column called period name. And the value should go into amount. Okay, and I need to remember to update the in to C. And that should do it. Let's quickly look. And like magic, it unpivoted our data set. Pretty cool. Next step, I'm going to add another step. And I want to take these two data sets because you can see the column names are now uniform. I want to now table combine. Table combine. Give it the input of the table. Yes. There we go. We've basically done it. Last thing that I want to do is I want to take the amount column and I want to transform that to, uh, let's call that a whole number. There's all number of stocks. Yes. And I'm going to select the period name, the amount. I want to go to pivot the column. The values are contained within the amount. And I say, all right, there we go. There we go. And let's return this to Excel. And there you go. Well, I hope that opened your mind on how you can use clustered lets and also use the split at function. Well, BA Sensei signing out.